Hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a variety of products from BCW Supplies. Uh, they have things such as these gaming boxes, they have modular sorting trays, as you can see right here. And then they have the Spectrum line, which has uh, various other things in it, like a deck case here, uh, bit boxes and these bit trays over here. So I'm just going to be cracking open all of this stuff, taking a look at it all, and giving you some impressions, my thoughts on these. These are not going to get a n numeric rating or anything like that. I'm just sharing these with you and maybe uh, some of these will be products you're interested in and perhaps this will help sway you one way or the other. So without further ado, let's go ahead and cut to the table, take a look at some stuff. I'll see you briefly on the other side. All right, so the first thing we're going to be looking at today is this modular sorting tray that says here on this side will include six trays that you can combine with other trays to make a larger group. Easily assembles in a variety of configurations. It's stackable and, of course, used for sorting or, uh, or displaying. You can put sleeved cards in it, all sorts of you know, top loaders, magnetics, whatever you want. And they slide together as shown right there. So I've got it right here and I've got some sleeved cards, which obviously I'm not going to be actually sorting. This is just for the sake of showing you. So you would just do, you know, that and sort these into the spots they go into. Like so. So that works out pretty well. The way these are set up is by Popping this off here, so there's this part that actually sits at the bottom like so, and then you can pop it from the, uh, so there we go, it clicks into place like that, so it's not going to move around, and then you can pop that off from below ideally, or you can hook, hook your finger into it, and then I'll show you the, the reverse of this, there's a little catch right here which is going to slot into that spot at the top right there. So you push that into it and you are good to go. You see all of these designs around the outside are for hooking these things into each other. So if we do this, there we go, as you can see they really do grab, then you can change your configuration. And I think they slide into each other sideways very well actually, with one side being the outer groove and this one then sliding into that like so. They line up nicely, that, that works out well. I do, however, have a little bit of a bigger problem when it comes to grouping sets, full sets like this, side by side, because they don't always line up right. You have to make sure that they're, that they're all going into the, uh, their grooves, and you need to sort of put some pressure on it like that. And they don't always slide over enough to line up well. So the front ones and the back ones are going to be slightly off here. Which does mean that the ones in front sometimes no longer fit into the spot they go into and they're putting sideways pressure on themselves. You really need to line these up right. And even at three, I'm having a hard time getting these to line up right. So I think these I would recommend for a display as long as it's only one line deep. I think if you do multiple lines, then you start running into trouble with these, and I don't um, don't really like the way that works out. I do like the two levels, the display level with the raked bottom, and then the flat bottom that you can just push into place. That works out well, I have no problem with that, I think the hole being there is a good idea. It's just lining up more than two lines, you need to make sure all the channels line up right, and you have to really put massive pressure on it. Then taking it apart, which I've already tried to do, is pretty difficult actually. So having to, you know, there, I got it. Um, having to then remove, if there's, this is three, mind you. If I do, this is, this is one pack. But another pack of this will have another six in there. So if I get several of these and I want to do a line of six tied into another line of six, that's going to take a lot of maneuvering, all right? So pretty decent, not great. As far as the modularity of it goes, this idea of they, they you can do any sort of, a, of arrangement you want to. Well, kind of, okay? 
So there you go, that is the sorting tray. Up next, I'm taking a look at some bit boxes. These are clear shells with a snap, a secure snap, and you can store, of course, dice or tokens in there. There's four in one of these. And I've already got them out of the box here, so let's take a look at them. So, as you can see, they come stored within each other. So we've got that, and then a lid for each one of them. I got a few tokens over here that we're just gonna chuck in there and then see how that goes. So there we go. That does feel like a secure, nice, tight fit. Uh, I like that the edging on these, now there is a, a side here which is empty, it's just shell, just empty shell on the side. But I do like that the square within it does not seem to taper off at the bottom. It does seem to go all the way down and have almost rounded, uh, I'm sorry, almost square corners, except for the very edges of the box here, which are a bit rounded on the inside. The uh, walls don't taper inward. And I like that design. I think that's a little bit of a better design than if they start to taper off. So there we go. There's one. Let's throw some more in this one here and see how it does with stacking. But so far, this feels pretty good, especially with the lid on. They feel strong, and then if they are stacked, they hold on to each other pretty well once they're stacked. Shouldn't go flying off, obviously the top being well formed and flat. So yeah, these are good. Good quality, nice build. I can see the plastic here on the side perhaps tearing or breaking and then making their way up into the actual form of the uh, tray, but you'd have to be really abusing these things for that to be the case. And then of course you can crack these open and use them. As far as the lid goes, while in use, you can store it underneath, but that gives you a lot of movement while you reach in, in there. So if you flip this over, it can sit within the structure and that'll keep it from moving. So you can do that as you, as you reach in there and grab your tokens, go looking for it. As long as your surface is fairly grippy, you should be good with that. So yeah, absolutely, good storage and a good solution for when you want to display the bits or keep them organized and contained on the table. The bid boxes here uh, get a thumbs up from me. I like these. These are a good shape, good construction, comparable to some other ones I've seen, but uh, definitely no slouch. So there you go, thumbs up on these as well. All right, now let's take a look at some bit trays here. So we've got two sets of bit trays. I know there's a lot of glare on there right now, but these, uh, the ones, the Spectrum bit trays, all in black, and the ones that are multicolored here, we're gonna go with the fun ones for right now. But of course, the, these are the same thing. We're gonna crack these open, which is not, not too difficult here. All right, that's gonna flop over like so. Then there's another protective plastic cover under this which actually, there we go, just that, you can get rid of that, and these are within their own plastic container. So we can move that aside and just take a look at this. So that's gonna come off, and then we've got these. So we've got six in here. Again, these are the multicolored ones. Let's pick something nice and bright, like the yellow ones. So the way these are going to work out, they are, again, just a rubber. They have a very, uh, tacky a little not not tacky tacky makes them sound sticky but they are um they prevent a lot of or they have a lot of friction and you are just meant to then pinch these corners and pinch the the rubber nipple there through the opening and then you've got yourself a tray these are a little bit tricky to put through uh but i assume that this will a get easier and b maybe you're not even interested in breaking them down after you put them together. And quite flexible, of course, as well. So you don't have to worry about tearing it. It seems to be very hardy. So there we go. Just putting all of these through. I like the colored one. I think these are nice, vibrant. And then they have at the bottom of the bowl a Spectrum logo, as you can see over here. And uh, one more. <clears throat> and then we'll throw some bits in it, see how that works. These are very straightforward. A lot of companies do these kinds of bit bowls. I'm assuming it's even, you know, maybe even from the same manufacturers. So there we go. These are, again, very sturdy. Good durability on that. And we can then throw some, throw some bits in there. 
and we are good to go. They should not move on the surface they're on too much, again, because they do create a lot of friction there at the bottom. They are a little wiggly, of course, but it shouldn't be a problem. Um, these are good. These are fine. There's nothing here that stands out from any other manufacturer's bit bowls like this. Um, uh, but they're also not doing anything that I would say is necessarily worse than any other bid boxes uh, that I've seen. They seem to go through well. There is a small, which I do like, if you look at the back of these, so here we'll take a look at another one, you'll see the, uh, the hole that will put the, the, the rubber bit through there. On the back of that, there is a reinforcement ring. I don't know if you can pick that up, but there's a reinforcing uh, area here on the back that is not on the front, and I do like that. That'll create a nice amount of pressure and tension on the corner, and it should allow you to then pop this out without ripping the rubber in any way, or, or perhaps not ripping it, but just uh, deforming it. So that's a nice touch. I don't know if other brands do that, but that is a nice touch. So yes, these are good. Absolutely no problem with these. If you need some bits uh, uh, contained and you want some bit bowls, this seems to be a good one to get. Now we're moving on to the Prime Gaming Box here. I'm guessing Prime X4 or Times 4, I'm not sure. Gaming Box. Designed for, as it says over here, sleeves, cards, oversized cards, dice tokens, pencils, whatever you want to store in there. So I've already cracked this open, and this is what the inside will look like. Again, it's got that frosted plastic, which I do like. Very good construction, though it is very plasticky, and uh, it feels like it's hard plastic. This could crack, I suppose, under a lot of stress. It's not going to give. The sides are very much hard plastic. And then you've got here a nice clasp that does close with a, with a lovely snap there and then as we crack this open you are going to have a few places for cards these four spots can hold cards then we've got down here a, a long empty space where you can put pencils or tokens perhaps and then one removable little box in a really nice shade of red also and then these two walls which you could also remove i suppose for large format cards or something like that. Let's see, they go back in fairly well. They are sturdy. You can just slide those back into place. And then the box is being held in place by a, a formed wall all the way around it, as you can see right there. So it slides back in very nicely. So let's put some stuff in here. I'm gonna put some cards in here. Let's see how, uh, how they do with the sleeved, the sleeved cards. All right, there we go. And then I'll put some in this spot here. Load up some tokens in there. And uh, perhaps uh, put some dice on top of that as well. And then like I said, this is just a long space, so anything can go in there. All right, so let's check this thing for uh, movement. Once we've got all that, we're going to close it. And we're going to shake it up a little bit, see if there's any transference of components anywhere. Obviously I'm not expecting those dice to go anywhere, but if you're throwing this thing around, not being particularly careful, things might shift. So, let's crack it open, and we've got that. It looks like everybody stayed put. All the cards are in their uh, respective places. Everybody in here got tousled, of course, but it's not going anywhere, it's also not going to shift. I really, really do like this wall design that holds the box in place. And then the fact that it's so easily removable, you can just put that on the table and you're good to go. I really like that too. This one is, I think, for me, a winner. I like that these are easily removed. I suppose you can even store them back here. If you're not using them, you can put them in this space. It is the right height where it should not bother anything but of course you're probably going to want to put a you know break them up here the, this size of card is just a lot more common and again they are sturdy so absolutely i like this this is a winner for me but this is not the last one we're going to be looking at we're looking at another prime gaming box that's bigger than this let's check that out here we've got the XL version of that. It's about twice as big. We'll put it side by side with this one. Uh, they have the same, uh, the same footprint, but of course it's about twice as deep as this one here. So we'll crack that open, take a look. It's got the same, 
satisfying snap there. Open that up. We've got four spaces here for decks of cards with, again, the removable walls if you want a larger space there. And then two spaces down here where you could, it looks like they are meant to store cards um, vertically. And two removable spaces for bits. So we've got this one here. Again, really nice construction. And again, those that wall design that holds everything in place. And a larger one back here. So there we go. That could even be a little dice shaker. So let's throw some things in there, shall we? One final thing I forgot to mention, actually, while I was looking at the, uh, the smaller version here, is the bottom of these spaces has a little bit of a, a felty, um, rubbery finish. So that when you're taking cards, putting cards in there and, and taking them out, that's actually very easy to do, to remove the cards from, from inside of it. So for instance, if I put that deck in there, I can just reach for the corner, and they all come out nice and clean, you know? So I really like that. So let's try this out here. I'm gonna put that in there. We're gonna transfer the contents of this one into that one there. Uh, and we'll try a few cards sitting in one of these spaces back here. So there we go. We can now scoot this out. I'll even go ahead and put from the, the board, the, the bit boxes, I'll put some tokens in there as well. So there we go, there's my bit box. So there we go, that's what that's gonna look like. These here seem to be good, though I do worry that the one side does not have the scoop. So the back of the box, obviously, doesn't have the scoop. So if this is particularly well filled, you're going to have to just remove some of it at a time to get the rest of them to give you enough leeway to get a finger behind the cards and remove the entire thing. Not ideal, the fact that there isn't a scoop on both sides where you can where you can get to it, but it works, you know, that, that, that should be fine. And then these, they are quite deep. Uh, they have the, the finger cutout is in the center of the stacks. So I think if there were a lot of cards in there, you would have to do this in parts or more likely, you can just remove the box. Because right now, while there's about 40 cards in there, I can get most of those in a single go. I think if I pull this box, it becomes a lot easier to simply reach into the space created by it and be able to pull out the entire deck of cards. And the same is true for this one, because the channel down the side on these goes all the way down. So as you can see, I can run my hand through them from one box to the other one, and the box will, of course, fill that in and limit that movement. Nice design. I like that. I like that if it does get a little unwieldy to reach all the way down to the bottom, you can just pull this, and now you have a, a great big channel in here that you can reach into and pull all the cards out of it. And they will still stay put and not really have a problem. So there we go. Both of these are very distinct also, so you should not have a problem mixing the two up. And then, of course, the shake test here. It seems like everybody stayed put. So there we go. Reach in here, pull all those cards out. Again, that felt rubbery, smooth, kind of silky finish on the bottom of these. You can tell there that it's very matte, not shiny like the rest of the plastic. That's because it's a different finish. It seems sturdy enough. I don't think it'll peel away. I suppose maybe if you get your nails into it, you might tear away at that uh, soft surface there. But it seems like it'll hold up well. So again, another winner here. Good color as well. Lots of room in this one. I like both of these. All right, next up we're taking a look at the Prism deck case, of which I have two here, actually, the orange and this deep blue here. So these are translucent shells. I'm just reading from the back of the, of the box here. Translucent shells, they store up to 100 double-sleeved cards, secure snap, fit standard size cards, and then it says horizontal orientation at the bottom. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. Between these two colors, I personally do prefer this orange. I think it's very nice. Uh, and they have a snap here where you pinch at the middle and then remove the top half of this. All right, just like that. These are very sturdy. They are 
nice hard plastic. They seem like they can take a beating. They also have a little bit of a rubberized finish on it, which feels very good, but does seem to attract smudging. And uh, this one came out of the box already with a little bit of smudging on it, a little bit of uh, just friction wear on the box that doesn't seem like it, it'll come off very easily. Or, you know, like if a little piece of glitter, there's a little something on there, it seems like it's hard to get th that sort of uh, contact dirt off of it. So let's go ahead and try this out here. So this is the bottom. Uh, I know that because the, the writing on here would be right side up if it's like this, okay? And then we've got some cards here. So they're saying on the back of the box, horizontal orientation. Um, I'm assuming they mean this by horizontal orientation. But if I store the cards in there like that, then as you open them, by the way, this is a, you know, it's a loose fit because they have no sleeves, but it's a, it's a good container. It's again, very sturdy, seems to hold quite a few cards. I don't really like storing them in there like this because then I have to make sure that when I pop the top off, I do so not at an angle, but that it comes straight up and very carefully, especially if the cards go all the way to the top of this. So you could do that. Also, you need to, of course, spill the whole thing over to get them out. I'm thinking like that is probably the better way to do this, but then you do need to make sure that the sides are within the edges before you push this down. That seems to make a little more sense to me, and again, I, I, that seems to also fit. This might be a better, um, better way to store them, in my opinion. And then as I pull off the top, then I don't have to worry so much about me you know, side swiping some of them off the top of the deck. This is about a hundred, let me see, 120 cards or so, 130 cards or so are in here. Obviously not, not sleeved cards, but yeah, there's plenty of room in there right now already, as you can tell there. And the, the secure clasp is a good one. It does seem to have a, give you a nice uh, crisp uh, click when you push it in. Doesn't seem to have any give to it sideways. There's no wiggle room in there, so it feels very hard and secure. I like these. The blue one, same deal. They do have a, a it is firm. You do have to sort of give it a nice solid squeeze to get the top off of it. But, uh, and the inside is then just uh, that plastic without the rubberized finish. But yeah, I do like these. I think uh, this is one of my favorite things that I'm, uh, that I'm looking at here today. Very nice, these boxes. I like them. All right, so that's gonna do it, everybody. Thanks very much for sticking with me. Uh, I think at the end of the day here, my favorite thing, or, or two things I'll say, were these gaming boxes, both this one and the other one, I think are really neat, well-made, very sturdy. And then the prism deck cases, especially this orange one. I really like this. Very sturdy, very attractive, in my opinion. And I guess my least favorite thing, though it is the thing I have the least need for, is the modular sorting trays. Neat idea. I like the idea of the modularity, the way this is thought out. I just didn't really like the way it was implemented, I guess. I, I find it uh, less than user-friendly. A little bit hard to deal with. But lots of good stuff here. Again, hopefully this is some... Uh, uh, there's some things in here that perhaps speak to you, and hopefully it's informational at the end of the day. So that's going to do it, folks. Thanks very much. My name is Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.